Okay, again, why am I doing this conversion? $50 to replace this. Okay, I've got the part number to we'll remove this unit um, and put on where a little adapter where we can run a regular oil filter. Again, this is $50. It only changes about one third of the oil. You always have to add oil a little bit after you change this off. So your, your cost ends up being about $55 plus labor if you don't do it yourself. Um, it's easy to do yourself with these. I get it. It's a gimmick. Um, weekend warrior stuff. Um, I guess they don't, they think if you do this often enough, you're going to change out oil often enough, but I swear these things don't come full off the shelf because they claim they have oil in them. Every time I've done it, I've had to add at least an, uh, a, a quart of oil. Um, other, so what we're going to do, we're going to take this off, run a regular oil filter, and we're going to put in the adapter to make it drain where you don't run oil all over the frame. And then you'll be able to do oil changes for 20 bucks, um, if that. So first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna cut that off. It might not come with it. It comes with it when it's brand new. I honestly don't know if this has ever been changed. Um, this might, the oil is awfully clean. So I know that the oil has been changed for 104 hours. The oil is really clean. So I guess they've been changing this and they just zip tie it again. Um, but you really don't have to. So what I'm going to do now is apply pressure down and then twist and this should pop off. So here we go. That's it. So you buy this off the shelf and it's 50 bucks. Plus you need to add some oil. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to take this bolt I'll find out what socket it is here in a second. And we're going to add part number MIU13767. Basically what this is, is just a stud that's going to go into the block and that will adapt for a regular oil filter. All right, now we're going to take this off. Uh, the size you need is a 28 millimeter or 28 millimeter fits the best. An inch and an eighth will probably do the job. You know, inch and an eighth kind of fits a little loose. The 28 is definitely tighter. I'm just going to pop it off here. All right, I, did, I didn't drain the oil at all before I did this. All right. I went ahead and removed the deck. It was a lot easier just to go ahead and remove the deck. Okay. So now let me show you the part numbers. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put this little male-to-male -male stud in part number MIU13767. And then you can run the John Deere oil filter number is AM125424 or a cheaper uh, or organ air, air oil filter 83-283. It's a bigger oil filter so it'll hold more oil. And I'm gonna go ahead and write the date and the hours so we know when we've changed this. So this is the oil filter I'm going to be throwing on there. Then next up we're going to be, in case you want to go ahead and skip this video, the rest of it, we're going to be putting on a fuel filter AM116304. And then this part is for the extended oil drain. Uh, it comes on a lot of them but not on this one. The part number is AM131611. And what that does is we're going to replace the stud right here, you can see. So if you were to take that out to drain all the oil, it's going to get all over the frame. And so I went ahead and put some um, uh, pipe thread on there, tape. And this will allow you to drain the oil and miss the frame. 
So we're going to do that at the same time. I was hoping a little bit of oil will come out. I knew I was going to get it net messy on both sides. So now we can just take a regular oil filter and this basically is the piece that could be added. I guess this could be added to a lot of uh, different models to put that easy change oil filter on it. So this takes an Allen that's pretty big. I don't, well, I have some at the shop but not here with me at the house. But luckily, 3 8 fits in there perfectly. So that'll snug it up so you don't need the big Allen. All right, so I'm gonna put some oil. It takes 10W30. If you don't do that, it'll be really hard to get off. Um, already got that started. I'm not worried about putting any tape on that because the oil filter is what keeps it from leaking. So, like I said, it's not going to the moon. Now we're gonna screw the oil filter onto that, but first, Let's go ahead and put this on the other side and drain all the oil out. All right, so you need a uh, 7 16 wrench to take this plug out. So I'm going to take this plug out. And then what I'm going to do is screw this in. And this takes a 15 16 This will be the last time we get such a messy oil change. Take the uh, dipstick loose and it lets the pressure come out even more. Look at all that. And look at this, what a mess. Okay, so it's finally just about to stop draining. I kind of did this cold. I didn't want shooting hot oil all over the place, but what a mess. I mean, imagine trying to do this oil change you know, you finally said, hey, I want to change all the oil. I'm tired of spending $50. Look at, look at all this. So once we get this on there, all you have to do is twist and pull this plastic cap off. There will be an O-ring on, left on this stud. And once you pop this, you can. I'll usually turn the wheels you know, like that and, and have the uh, oil pan a little easier to get to to catch it right from this tube. Okay, so now that that's installed in the future, all I gotta do is just turn that and pull that off and it'll, all the oil will start draining right there. Do it while it's hot, it'll drain better. And then pop this loose and it'll drain out even faster. Then once it's done draining, simply put the cap on and it goes on like that. I got the oil filter now screwed on there. You just want to do that hand tight. I wrote the date and the hours on the unit. These engines take 10W30. I'm not using expensive oil. I buy the cheapest 10W30. It's a lawnmower, folks. This is great oil. It's fine. It'll do fine. As long as you change it frequently, you're not really going to have any issues with this motor unless you either run it too low on oil or have fuel or air filter problems. Just buy the cheap oil. Run your, if you have a Toyota 4Runner, put Penn's oil in it. Other than that, run the cheap oil. To write on the oil filter, get this big whiteout pen. Shake it up, get the little ballpoint pen, press it down, you squeeze it right here a little bit, add some pressure and then you can make marks like that on something like your oil filter I'll do it on the bottom of my hood or whatever to remind me what size wrench I need and what oil filter it takes just makes life easy okay I've put about two and three quarters of a quart of motor oil in here and I'm going to show you guys how to check it 
I haven't cranked it up yet to fill up the oil filter. That's what we're about to get to. The correct way to check the oil on these units is you do let it go all the way down. You twist it on, let it fall down. And I should be, I'm trying to get above, I don't know if you guys can see that. See how I'm above the, the full mark quite a bit? I haven't cranked it up yet to fill up that larger oil filter. So I've done that on purpose. Again, I put about two and three quarters quarts of oil in here. Uh, that larger oil filter will require a little bit of oil. That's a good thing. We want more oil. So now I'm going to crank it up. Put the parking brake on. I've already changed the oil filter. I haven't changed the fuel filter or the spark plugs yet, but we're going to go ahead and crank it up. Fill up that oil filter, and then we'll check that level. I need just run it for at least about 30 seconds. Now I'm going to wait about 30 seconds or so. Take the dipstick out, wipe it, and check the oil level. Right where we need to be. Now that the oil filter is full, we're right where the oil level needs to be for the crankcase. And again, that was about two and three quarters quarts of oil. Um, once I changed, I drank all the oil out and put the larger oil filter on it. One thing I've already done is I've already put our new air filter. I went ahead and got that. The part number for this air filter is MIU14395. I change these quite often. And it's just, there's, there's another cylinder shaped air filter. It's quite common on other mowers, but that's, this is the MI, this is the shorter one. It's MIU14395. Uh, all right, now that we're about to change this fuel filter, one thing I like to do when I'm working on commercial units or these units that maybe have, I've seen a mower that's been sitting for a while, I'll just go ahead and give a quick spray of WD-40 on these clamps and that hose. And right in here, uh, sometimes these can be really hard to get. This plastic will get seized up to this rubber. And I'll spray some WD-40 when I know I'm going to be doing it, and I'll give that you know a few minutes to kind of soak in. The longer, the better. Regular player, pair of pliers. Not almost free, and now I'm going to get the old other fuel filter ready. These are directional, so it's coming from this side going up to the carburetor, or actually to the fuel pump. You could put it on this way. If you did, you won't be able to see any of the gas that's being filtered. You'll see the gas after it's filtered. And if this, once this breaks, you know, it would send all the dirty filtered contaminants right to the fuel pump. You put it on this way, you, you're, you're viewing the filtered fuel. So once you do this, you're going to start getting, you could drain your entire fuel system this way. 
once you create that flow, it'll just keep draining until the gas reaches the bottom of the fuel pickup line. So now what we're going to do, we're going to put the fuel line, fuel filter in. And so now it's coming out there. Now we're ready to move our hose clamps back into position. Sometimes you have to kind of wiggle it. Try to get as straight as possible. That side's easy. And now a new fuel filter is installed. While I was doing that, I re accidentally removed the fuel filter from this retention clamp. This one is for that. And that's how it should be. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna remove the spark plugs. A lot of times people will grab these. Don't grab this while it's running, it'll shock you. So just grab it right here and just gently wiggle it back and forth. Just kind of pull it and it should pull off. Don't grab it with some pliers or anything like that. If you need to, spray some WD-40 on it. WD-40 is safe for all electronics, for like electrical connections like this. Not electronics, but electrical connections. Spray a little WD-40 in there. And when you put it back on, you just shove it right back straight, wiggle it off, a little bit of pressure pulling it. Because if you grip it and pull on this, you're going to damage the wire and need to replace it. You just take a Champion RC12YC. What you'll need is a spark plug socket, 5 8 Have the new spark plug with a little bit of anti-seize already on the threads and what you want to do is start make sure you don't cross thread these so I might sink it down really fast with my little small impact set on a very weak setting so I'll set it on a really weak setting Run it down till it stops. And then I'm going to take this off and I'm going to feel of it, tighten it up by hand with my ratchet. All right, I going to, went ahead and put this spark plug in the other side. So I've changed the oil, air filter, fuel filter, spark plugs. I've put new blades on the deck and I've greased the spindles check the air pressure now i'm going to put the deck on there put the hood back on and that would pretty much be a general service uh, this battery is showing about 70 percent so i'm not going to worry about changing that right now the um, when you crank it up you can put a dc voltmeter on here and it should be putting out about 14 volts that would let you know the charging system's working and that pretty much sums up a general service. If I heard or I could inspect, right now I could inspect the drive belt and drive idlers. Um, but the next thing up, I'm going to just put the deck on there, put the hood back on there. And in the, my next video, I'm going to show you guys how to fix the misplaced headlight. All right, guys, I got it all back together. Um, test cut with it. I'm actually, then I washed it and I'm about to sell this. And just did a just did this to really flip it real quick. Uh, it's going to make somebody a really good mower. And also, I thought this would be a good opportunity to get some video. I already have a mower, um, and this won't fit through my backyard through the gate anyway. But I, I did, these are good mowers. The difference between the E models <clears throat> and the D the E one thirty the D one thirty this one is a little bit larger. Uh, just the same engine, everything's the same except just the frame and seats, just a little more uh, room, bigger tires on the back, wider, um, just a little bit bigger, more expensive model, but everything's running good, it's working good. I uh, really like this mower, 
And um, if this helped you guys out, let me know and make a comment. I'm going to have some, I'm going to sell this and I'm going to buy a generator and an air compressor. So I'll be doing some videos on that. All right. Thanks.